This is recording 12.3, Viral Multiplication, the Lytic Cycle. So remember that because viruses aren't technically living, we talk about uh, them uh, reproducing technically as uh, multiplying or replicating. So when uh, viruses enter into their host, they carry with them very few uh, genes, uh, very few proteins, and uh, all the other proteins are going to come from their host. So uh, everything that they need to replicate or multiply uh, is going to be provided by their host. So the ribosomes, uh, the uh, machinery that is going to be necessary for them to replicate their nucleic acid, uh, for them to produce their proteins, all of that stuff is uh, going to come uh, from the host and they're going to literally take over the host metabolism and uh, set the host to uh, making viral proteins uh, and making viral nucleic acids. So um, a virion is the term that is used uh, for a complete virus that is capable of infection. So uh, when we think of viral multiplication, uh, the complete uh, start to finish is designed to make sure that um, the uh, process is going to result in new virions being made that are going to be capable of going out and infecting new host cells. So we're going to talk here first of all about the lytic cycle and the lytic cycle is uh, how bacteriophages uh, infect and multiply uh, within bacterial hosts. So um, this cycle uh, that we're going to talk about is um, uh, w what was first understood in the T-even bacteriophages. T-even bacteriophages uh, infect E. coli. And just like E. coli was uh, the most understood or is the most understood of the bacteria, the T-even bacteriophages are the most understood viruses. But the other bacteriophages replicate in the same manner, or at least most of them do. So the lytic cycle uh, is going to happen in a similar way, whether you're talking about the T-even phages or uh, uh, any other phage that would be infecting like Staph aureus or any other bacteria. So the lytic cycle begins with attachment and uh, attachment is uh, a random collision, uh, occurs via a random collision. So this um, T even uh, uh, phage randomly uh, uh, comes in contact with this uh, with this phage and um, or I'm sorry randomly collides with the host so um, there's no way that this virus can like seek out a host and uh, so it just uh, happens to um, bump into its host um, and uh, because it has those proteins that uh, 
allows it to attach in a in a shape specific manner um, it uh, uh, attaches on uh, to its host the way uh, a key fits into its own lock so um, uh, it attaches on uh, I have in your notes there uh, adsorption but um, uh, it should be absorb most people say attachment in any case especially when we're talking about the the lytic cycle so um, in the case of T even phages, uh, it's going to be the tail and the tail fibers that connect, but it can be the capsid here that connects uh, onto the cell wall. So the attachment is going to be to the cell wall. In some instances, it uh, can connect on to the flagella of the bacterium or it could be to the fimbriae of the bacterium. Uh, but these attachment sites are going to be uh, shape specific and uh, when the phage connects it has uh, on the tail and tail fibers or on the capsid it has a little bit of phage lysozyme. Now remember that that lysozyme causes destruction of the cell wall. So in a very local spot, uh, that cell wall will degrade away and there will be a little bit of, there will be a little hole there. So step two in the cycle is penetration. So uh, this uh, uh, phage is going to inject its nucleic acid into the host and it works just like a syringe. So the uh, capsid, the tail and the tail fibers at this point have completed their function. The only thing that's going to go into the host is the nucleic acid. So once inside, biosynthesis begins. Biosynthesis is uh, a manufacture, uh, manufacturing process. So um, the, the phage breaks down the host's uh, a chromosome and now uh, the host can't do anything for itself and instead the uh, phage sets the host up to doing phage things. So uh, the host starts manufacturing phase compo phage components. So the uh, nucleic acid is of the phage is made first and then the capsid is made and if uh, as in this case if the phage has tail and tail fibers those are made last and uh, a very important thing the damage to the host cell wall is uh, fixed as well. Remember that if there is damage to the host cell wall, um, it's possible that this host could lice. And at this point, all of these components are uh, not uh, assembled. And uh, so at this point, there are no mature virions. So premature lysis of the host uh, would be harmful to the virion at this point. So it's very critical that that damage to the host cell is repaired. 
So um, following biosynthesis, maturation begins. Maturation involves a spontaneous assembly of the uh, uh, new virions. In other words, these phages are going to start putting themselves together. The nucleic acid is packaged inside the capsid and then uh, if, as in this case again, if there are tail and tail fibers, they start putting themselves together. And so all of these newly formed phages are going to uh, uh, process themselves. And then finally, um, the uh, release happens. Release happens via lysis. So again, uh, phage lysozyme is going to break down the cell wall, but this time it works from the inside out. So there's a hole in the cell wall that causes this host to lyse, and all of these newly formed phages are released. And of course, this is going to kill the host cell, lysis. And so that's why this is called the lytic cycle. Um, so uh, this uh, is going to release um, anywhere from 20 to 50 of these newly formed phages. And um, this, uh, from start to finish, we would call this a burst time. The burst time for most phages is uh, one to three hours, generally a few hours. So um, this can actually be monitored uh, on the surface of a plate. So uh, when uh, when you do this, what you do is you would seed the plate with a bacterial lawn. So you take something like a TSA plate and coat it very heavily uh, with, uh, with your bacteria. So uh, for example, uh, you could take something like TSA and coat it heavily with E. coli. And on this particular plate, um, the uh, pale peach color there that you're seeing would be the E. coli. So if you take a swab and coat it in three different directions with the E. coli and then put it in the incubator uh, for 24 hours, the entire surface of that plate would uh, be seeded with uh, your E. coli lawn. So coated so thickly that um, you can't even see uh, any of your uh, swab marks on there. And then gently pour the phage over top of that. Just uh, uh, take your uh, bacteriophage um, suspension and just gently pour it over the top. And within an hour or so, um, every place where you had one phage, that one phage would cause the E. coli to lice in that area and produce, you know, 20 or so uh, new phages. And then those would go out and uh, infect 20 more E. coli. And then an hour or so later, um, those would uh, cause the E. coli in that area to lice and uh, produce 20 or more new uh, phages and so on. And so after a while, um, you would have a hole in the lawn. And these holes in the lawn are called plaques. So that plaque is an 
area where uh, there is no longer uh, any E. coli. So it's a place where that phage has um, lysed, where you had one original phage that has um, produced more uh, more phages, and so it's an empty spot in the bacterial lawn. Um, so a plaque is basically, if you think of it, the opposite of a colony. A colony is a spot where you had one bacteria that grew and grew and grew. A plaque is a place where you had one phage that killed more and more and more bacteria, you know, producing more and more and more viruses. So if we left this um, plate alone uh, within a matter of several hours, uh, all of those uh, E. coli would be gone. In other words, these plaques will get larger and larger and eventually they will all grow together and there will be no E. coli left. We could do something like this in lab. Uh, there is nothing harmful about this. Uh, in other words, these phages are not harmful to people. We do not have the receptor sites and that's something to keep in mind. You do not have the receptor sites for bacteriophages. So any, uh, any phage, any bacteriophage, any virus that's infecting a bacterium is never going to infect you. The reason we don't do this in lab is it is very time sensitive. So if you're not there at the appropriate time to look at the, at the plaques, they are all gone. And putting something in the refrigerator or whatever to look at later is not going to make any difference for something like this. If you don't see them at the appropriate time, it doesn't matter. These uh, phages will continue to lyse the bacteria regardless of refrigeration. So uh, plaque is an area where the phages have uh, destroyed the bacterial growth. Okay, so the lytic cycle infects bacteria. It uh, lyses bacteria.